Hi everyone, it's Christine. Welcome to Sketching with Christine. Today we are going to sketch the bee with the flower. All right, so this is our finished product. So we're going to start. So we're gonna start with some basic shapes. First shape we're going to do is the bee, so we have an idea of where the bee is going to go. So I'm gonna put the bee up here. So I'm going to start with a circular, or sorry, egg-shaped head. Okay, egg-shaped head. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as it's fairly close to an egg with the point on the bottom. And I drew it in the left-hand side, um, just over from half. Okay, so there's his head. The next thing I'm gonna do is draw a circle and that will be the top part of his body coming to the left of the head. So there's my circle, and it, my circle actually runs right into his head, okay? So make sure that's the circle shape. And then the last bit is a larger circle, um, sort of a, more of an oval than a circle, sorry, and that is his bum area. So it comes right out of the circle, nice and wide, oval shape, and it stops. So the circle is actually running into the right-hand side of my oval. And again, everyone's is gonna be slightly different, so if yours is bigger uh, than mine, that's fine, all right? In the end, we're gonna still get a B. So there is Mr. B, the outline, basic shapes of our B. The next thing we're now going to do is the basic shape of our flower. Now that we have the bee there, we can make a comparison with our flower. So our flower is going to go to the right of the bee. I'm going to start with just a circular shape uh, for the top of the flower. So I'm gonna go over and I want him to eventually land on my flower, so I don't want it too far away from him. So I'm gonna go about halfway and I'm gonna go just to the right of half. So I'm gonna draw my circle. I'm not drawing it too dark because I am going to go over the bottom half. We're only going to be seeing the bottom half of our circle. The rest is gonna be covered with some of our petals, which we're going to do now. So the top half is going to be lots of texture and pattern, and that's going to be the pollen, where the pollen is. So we are going to draw the petals that are going in the downward um, as it's growing. Okay, so the first petal I'm gonna start with is the run, one front and center. So I'm gonna start about halfway down my circle, right in the center. You can draw a little dot. And then I'm going to go to the left, gonna curve out to the left, nice and long to a point that's almost in line. If I was to draw a line, straight down, it's almost in line with it. It should be fairly close. And you're gonna do this exa the exact same thing on the other side and come to a point. So there is our first petal. I'm gonna go to the left first and then I'll go to the right after. Now I'm going to weave my petals within, behind, and within each section, okay? So I'm gonna start with this one here. So I'm gonna go over, don't mind my cats, they're wrestling. <laughs> you can hear them on the floor <laughs> right below me. So I'm gonna go over, um, I'm just gonna skip over about a half centimeter. And you can put a dot in there if that helps you. So my left hand side of the petal is actually going to be drawn completely. My right hand is going to be hidden behind this front petal. So. You can decide if you want your petal to go on a slight angle. Sometimes what helps me is I can draw a small line right down the center, which you're gonna use later, okay? Draw a small line down the center, and mine's gonna go about to here. This line is gonna be your guide for the outside of your petals, the contour of your petals. Now a contour, if you are just do, joining me, um, a contour line is the outline of something. So there's an art term that you can use, contour line. So I'm gonna draw my first, I'm gonna go out, and then into a point where my line was. Now my right hand side, it's going to go 
behind this petal. So I stop drawing, but I still kind of play with my eye here, following it down so it would come out about here if I was to start curving it in, and then it meets there. So there's my second petal. My third petal comes right out the edge, the side. The last two petals come out the side. So I'm gonna start with this one. I'm going to have this come right out here along the edge okay, of my circle, the left-hand side. I'm still gonna draw that line that comes down. And that's like a guideline. So there's that center guideline. I'm going to go out to the left and curl back in to meet that line. And then of course this guy here is hidden behind. So I'm gonna go pretend I'm drawing and then meet here and bring him to the point. So there's three petals. All right, now my last petal. It's just going to be peeking out the side but it's gonna to come to a little bit of a curl. So it's just starting the exact same spot here and I go up a little and down and to a point and then I come back to meet the side of my third petal. So there we go, there's four petals. Now in behind, there are petals that are drooping just like these, but in behind. So we're going to put just the edge of their petals and we're gonna darken them up for us. Okay, just in between each one, just a little bit of a petal. I'm not gonna worry about this one because this guy is going to have my stem. There's my stem. So I'm not gonna put a petal there, okay? But I'll put a few more over here. And these ones we're gonna color in dark later. So now I'm gonna go to my right. So I have four petals on my left. I'm going to have three more petals on my right. Okay, so I'm going over half a centimeter, putting a little point. I'm gonna draw that center line as my guide. This time, instead of curling in, I'm curling out a little bit. I'm gonna draw to the left, curl out, and then back into that point. And the left-hand side here is going to be hidden behind my big petal. And then I come back out and meet over here. If you want to erase all of these lines here from our circle, you can do that. But we're also going to be shading in this area, so I am personally not going to worry about it. But I am going to put a little petal in between here that represents the petal from behind. Okay, just a little end of the petal. And now I have two more to go. So I'm going to start on the outside of my circle on the right hand side. I'm going to draw that center line. I'm going to have it peek out. So I'm going to go up to the right and down to meet and then the one that's on the inside it's hidden by this petal so I come back out here and pop out there and of course I'll put a slight tip of the other petal from the other side on that one and last but not least our end petal you can curl it up like this one if you want or curl it down, it's completely up to you. It comes up and then down and then back to the third petal from the center. And then of course, if you wanna put that little petal from the other side poking out. So there's the basic shape of our flower, the basic shape of our bee without the wings and the legs and that sort of thing. Those are all details that we're definitely going to take care of, okay? So now let's work on the B so that our hand doesn't smudge our, um, our poor flower if you're right-handed like I am, okay? Alrighty, so we have a few things to do for the B. So I'm gonna bring the B, I'm gonna bring the phone down so that you can see more of the B, if that helps. Here we go, I apologize for that shadow. It's the only light source I have down here, so 
We've got a little bit of a casted shadow, but that's okay. All right, so our B, there we go. Now you can really see them. So we're going to start with just adding in the wings and then we're gonna add the legs in and then we're going to start adding all of his fur, his little hair and his eyes and his antenna. Uh, and we're gonna do a little bit of shading and blending. So the wings, so the wings come in two parts. We have, I'm gonna show you the original. Okay, so we have this large wing that is actually divided into two. So I draw this big triangular shape with rounded ends. And then I do put a line in here to break him up so that this part of the wing here is behind, so it's darker. And then the back wing on our picture, the other side of the wing, um, we have it in two parts as well, one's darker than the other. And again, it's a triangle form, okay? triangle shape. So let's do that. So our wing comes, both of them come out of this circle. So our one from behind will come right out of the top of the circle and I'm going to draw it going to the left hand side, to the left hand top corner. So I'm going to go up and then I'm going to round it out a little and then come back down to where I started. So this is a nice long triangular shape with a rounded edge. And right beside it, I'm gonna draw another shape, similar but a little smaller. I'm gonna go out the side, round it out, and then come back down to that point. So there's two parts of his wing. Next, I'm gonna go down to this side, and again, this is a YouTube video, so if you feel like I'm going too fast, you can hit the pause button and stop. You can repeat it, that sort of thing. That's the great thing about these YouTube videos compared to my live shows. My live shows, I have to stop myself. I can't just pause. Uh, so that's the great thing about this. <laughs> if you would like to join my live shows, I'm weekly, Monday to Friday, 11 a.m., and I'm on Instagram, and my... Um, handle on Instagram, my name on Instagram is at sg underscore art Sloan. And I'll try and figure out how to put a little link on this video so you guys can come there. All right, let's get back to Mr. B. So now I'm going to go inside my circle. I'm going about the center area, okay? The left side of the center. So I'm gonna pick this spot. That's a nice little spot to start from everything is going to come back to here. So I'm going to go up and around and back down in a triangle shape with rounded edges instead of hard edges. And then we'll fiddle around and darken and that sort of thing after. Okay, so I'm going up towards the left hand side. I'm actually going to go around the same height as this back one here, just it's a little bigger. That's the difference. Okay around and back around slowly and eventually get to our point, okay? And then I'm gonna split this into, well, I'm just gonna split part of it. So if you were to split it into thirds, so it's a third, okay? I'm gonna split that and that's going to give us um, another section of our, our B wing. What I'm gonna do though is I'm going to just erase the top corner and I'm going to angle it a little more. Okay, there we go. And of course, I have all these lines in behind, so I'm going to just gently erase them. We are going to shade this in, but it's still a wing which is transparent, so we don't wanna see any extra lines. All right, next thing we need to do is the legs. They do have two, four, six legs. Uh, so we are going to start with the legs just under his chin. There's two. I normally do them in sections. So I call this sort of sausage legs. And it's something that we do when we're learning how to draw figures or body parts. We divide the body up into sausage links. Okay, so the first one we're going to do, and I'm gonna show you what I mean by sausage link is the one that comes right out of his side here. And I'm gonna draw 
a long oval shape. So there's my long oval shape. My next oval shape is going to come right underneath it and it's just a shorter one, but it's connected to the one right above it and almost looks like sausage links. Okay, they're connected together. These are gonna be covered with little hairs, so I'm not worried about, you know, coloring them in or anything like that. And then the very final spot is just a line, and then I just draw an upside down U on them. They almost look like, like it can be a V or a U. They look like little pincers, okay? The next one beside it is a little smaller, but it's behind the, part of it's behind his face. So you're just gonna draw another little sausage link, moving away from the face a little, and then another one, and you'll notice this one's smaller because it's behind, and then the line with your V or your U shape. And again, these are gonna be covered up with little fur, little hairs. So that's the two there. And then we have two in between these, this spot here. So coming right out the belly. So this time, nice and long sausage, medium sized sausage, and a line. Now I'm moving the line to go in a different angle than the other ones because you want to show movement. Okay. And then the one behind is a little smaller. Okay, so it's here, one, two, and three, and four. There's how it's sort of divided up. And then of course, my legs coming down, they start at the bottom of our big oval shape here. The first one I'm going to do is the one that is closest to us, and then we're gonna do the one that's behind. So it's kind of drooping down. So we've got another sausage, and another mini one, a line, and a U or a V shape. And then one right behind it, a little smaller, and a little smaller midpoint, and a little smaller line. So it's kind of hanging behind. So it looks like he's ready for landing. His hands are ready for landing. All right. Okay, so now that we have the basic shape, now the fun part is actually filling it all in with the hairs, and I'm gonna show you what I mean with the hair. Look at all of the hair on him, okay? He's a furry little beast. So how we do the different colors without using color, because we know a bee is black and yellow, but instead we only have darkness and lightness of our pencil. So we're going to divide up our B into some sections, then we're going to shade two sections and his head, and then on top of the shading, that's when we start putting all of the little hair. So the white will have the hair with no back color, and then the black will have the hair but with a shaded back color. So we're going to do that before we do the wings. Okay, so now let's decide. We need to divide our B up into his, his rows, okay? So the rows of dark and light. So I'm gonna divide the um, top area here, his circle. I'm going to draw a curved line right past where my wing comes in to split my circle right into half. This half will be light, this half, will be shaded. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm using the side of my pencil and I'm going to shade in my B. So this will represent the darkness of my B. Shade all the way down. If you shade into the legs, that's perfect because we are going to be coloring them later. All the legs are black. Okay, so once you've done your first base coat, you can use your fingers. I use my fingers as blending tool because A, they're free, and B, they have little oil glands, sweat glands on them, 
which I can use to move the lead around and it works really well. So I'm gonna start with this one and if I find that my finger, all the oils are gone, then I just switch fingers. Okay, I have four more options on that hand. So there's the light compared to the dark for the rows of the B. Then I'm going to skip the same width. So sometimes I'll use my pencil as a measuring tool. So if I was to use the green section of my pencil, green on the edge, and it actually goes to the yellow, the second yellow. So I'm gonna use that as a measuring tool. I'm gonna use that yellow on the edge and I'm gonna see where my green is and I'm gonna put my other finger there and I'm just going to do a little line. This is going to be the line that's going to tell us where it's light and where it's dark. So again, I want to create a slight curve Okay, a curved line. So this one's dark, which means that this one is going to be light. And then I wanna do it one more time so I can finish my darkness here. So I take my pencil that I used as a measuring tool, I find the yellow on that line and I find the edge where the green is. So it's about there. Again, it's an eyeball if you end up going darker in some parts and that's fine. Okay, so there, this means that this part is dark and then this one's light. So with my pencil, the side of my pencil, I'm going to darken up that area. You can darken it a few ways, circular motion, back and forth, completely up to you. Because my legs are right here, I'm gonna darken them up. We could have done that earlier, I didn't think of it then. And if you find it's not dark enough, then you can go back with another layer of pencil. Okay, that's the great thing about this. You can always go back and add another layer. And with my trusty blending tools. There we go. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna shade in my other legs and my head, because my head is dark. Now you may find that your pencil has a groove on it. From... You may find that your pencil has a groove on it. So you can use that groove to create a nice smooth shade. Okay, so I'm going over it a couple times and again, I'm gonna blend. go. All right. So I will come back and do the eye at the very end. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some hair um, so that we can figure out uh, how much on which side, that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you again the hair. The hair, all I did was small little pencil strokes. Okay, and I go across the white area, I go across the dark area, back down to the white area, and I'm using the same pressure on my pencil and the same size, I mean, give or take. There's some that are a little longer, some that are a little shorter, and then I go all the way down to the bottom of his bum area where the stinger is hiding, okay? So we're gonna do that first, then we'll do the little hairs on his legs. Okay, so right now it looks like a bee, but it doesn't look like an actual furry bee. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm just going to turn my paper slightly just so I can follow um, the, the way my bee is going. So we're gonna start at the top of near his head. We'll come back and do his head later. We're gonna start here and we're just gonna work our way down, going back and forth, all right? And always going down follow sort of the flow of his shape. So we're going down, so this way I'm gonna go up a little and down curved. These ones I'm gonna curve a little bit. Okay, so right out the head, even you can have some that go outside of your outline. Okay, so see how I'm using different brush, or not brush, pencil. <laughs> I'm using different pencil thickness. 
Okay, different pencil lengths, brush strokes. I keep saying brush strokes. I also paint, can you tell? Pencil strokes, various sizes, all the way down. So eventually you'll kind of get into a groove, all right? You'll find that groove and you can go back and forth if you really feel that groove. So see how I'm going back and forth? Okay, have some come out the sides. And when you get down into the dark area, it's gonna look a lot darker because you have that base shade. And again, you're gonna get into your own little groove of your little hairs. Don't forget to go outside of the lines though, okay? Just so then it gives it a little more texture and he looks hairier and a little messier. <laughs> okay, back and forth, back and forth. And take breaks. If you're not used to doing something like this, sometimes your hands can cramp up. So every once in a while, take a break, kind of wiggle your fingers out and then you can come back. Okay, now going into back into my white area. So I've, because I've done drawing for a very long time, um, sometimes little tricks, little things help you. So I'm using this back and forth motion and I, I like that look, so you can do the same thing. If you don't want to and you just wanna stick to going one, 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 you can do that too, okay? You'll, you'll figure out your own sort of groove. Okay. Furrying up his legs a little bit. I will go over those legs after, and we're gonna add a little bit of hair to those legs. Okay, so I'm rounding out now to the bottom. So I'm change the direction of my B. So already you can tell that it's furry and the fur changes color, whether it's black and white or yellow and black. But this is a long, tedious process, but rewarding because it's starting to take shape and look like a bee. Like I said, take breaks if you want to. You can put this on pause while you stretch your hands out. Making sure you pay attention to what you do. I was looking the other way <laughs> and I went off. And coming right down to his bum, have some sticking out the back. Going up, going down, until he's a furry little creature. <laughs> and now he looks almost like a furry kidney bean. And we'll shade in our wings in a second. Alrighty, so. Um, I'm going to work on his legs right now and all they are the same thing. So we've darkened them up, but now we're going to draw little dark strokes, pencil strokes, all the way around each shape. So I go all the way around and then go inside. So see how furry they are, okay? and then even a little bit of fur on their little hands. Okay, so this one here is behind. So this one is in front, so I showed the whole fur. This one's behind, so I, I start right at the edge of my fur line. Okay, and go all the way around with little tiny pencil strokes and then fill it in. And then of course, the little leg part. Okay, so there's two. This guy I see up here he starts, so that's where I'm gonna start. Go all the way around, and I'm adding a little more pressure so it's really nice and dark. Okay, because these are black. And the little guy, little hands. 
And this one I don't start right at the top because he's on the back side. And two more. And the bottom. And then this one comes right out the side of the face. So he's a little smaller. <clears throat> and there we go. So there's little hands. So we're gonna go to the wings next and then the head. So wings, the great thing about the wings is they're very delicate. So we're going to draw them delicate. First thing we're going to do is just shade in the whole entire wing with one layer of shading. One layer, the whole entire thing. Once you're done that, you're going to blend it. We want to have no pencil lines, just a nice base color. Okay, nice base color. From there, we can darken the bottom just a little bit on this bottom section. And we're going to darken this whole other one. So all I'm doing is a second layer using the side of my pencil. Second layer to darken that up right to the edge, right to the base. Okay, go in with another layer, a third layer. Three layers should do it. And that, that's a nice layer for the outside or kind of folded half. All right, so it shows that this part is in front of this one. And we're going to outline it right down, outline, outline. And you don't have to be perfect with the outline. It can have a little bit of a wobble so it looks more realistic. And then we're going to throw some veins in there. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line that kind of curves and then out of that line will be another and then another. See how I'm creating these little delicate veins for our wings. Drawing little lines, barely touching my paper. Okay, and that will be our bees wing veins, I guess they're called. Okay, so there's one wing complete. Now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do something very similar. I'm going to color in the whole entire thing with one base color, use my finger to blend, and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna darken the base and then darken this side. Okay, darken it two or three layers. This one's a little easier because he is a lot smaller. And then I'm just going to blend that out again and then outline. There we go, two wings. All right, final moment for our poor little bee. We're going to fill this whole entire thing with fur or with hair. But first I wanna do his little eye. Within this large oval, we have a medium size oval that is going to be very similar to our outside oval. And I'm going to color the whole entire thing, but I'm gonna leave one little circle and we're going to erase that little circle to be nice and white. And the rest, is nice and dark. Probably two layers or three or four layers, depending on how much pressure you put on your pencil. And then create a nice B I. Okay, the rest of our B is actually created just by fur. Okay, so 
rest of our bee head, I should say. So I start at the top and I'm following the shape of my bee, of my bee head. See, it's curved a little, so I'm kind of following the shape of that, going all the way around. And you can actually see his other eye, but you can allude to it by adding a little bit of a darkened line on the outside here, and then just doing your fur around it. A little bit of fur all the way around. You don't see his little mouth. So you just do your little fur all the way around. And then at the top, we have our line, one line. It goes down on an angle and at the very bottom it kicks out. So it looks almost like a leg or a broken hockey stick. So you've got one out there and I outline it a couple of times to make it nice and dark. So that's one antenna. And then of course I have another antenna and it can go the same way. I'm gonna have it go up, broken this way, and up this way. And it can go down into the head, not on the edge. Okay, so his antenna is kind of trying to figure out what's going on with the world around him. <laughs> All right, B is finished. All right, so next is our flower. So I'm gonna bring the camera up a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Our flower will be as dark as our bee, so it's really gonna pop out. First thing we do with our flower, we're going to work on the center where the pollen is all connected. So I'm gonna bring the original up so you can see. So the pollen is connected in all of these little lines. So just like we did on the bee, we're gonna do these little lines we're gonna do them nice and darker. So we're gonna shade the top of our circle and then add all of these little lines and that's where all the pollen collects. Okay, so we've got our bee, or our flower, the top of our flower I'm coloring in. Okay, so I'm coloring in with the side of my pencil. I'm going in between each part of my flower, nice and dark coloring in because we want it to look realistic. Okay, dark, dark, dark around the outside. Doing another layer. And when I'm happy with the darkness, I take my finger and I blend all around. It's okay if you go into your petals because we're gonna be shading them anyway. And now the fun part, I love this part. I'm going to start going all the way around with these jagged lines, and then I'm gonna fill the whole thing with jagged lines as well. And you're gonna press darker than your, press harder so you're darker than your actual flower. Okay, so see how I went all the way around? Looks like a funky haircut. And then I do a second layer, and I go right on top of that first layer. Follow it around. And then a third layer, right on top of that second layer. And I'm squishing them together, okay? And then another layer, squishing them together. And then another layer, which might be our last layer. My camera's going really crazy. Sorry, I'm shaking the table. And I'm going in between my petals as well. And you can go and add a few more in between if you want. You can add a few little longer ones. Okay, some beautiful texture when you're doing this. You could do this for hours, it's so rewarding. So there is our center of our flower, ready for that bee to come in. So all we have left now is to work on our petals. So we're gonna go through each petal and we're going to darken the, t the closest to the flower, closest to the center and the tips so that it looks like they are folding towards us and then back down dropping. So we're creating a three-dimensional effect. So I'm gonna start on this very far left one 
I'm going to color in the base where it hits the flower, the center, and I'm going to color the tip. And I'm just shading it in with the side of my pencil, not too, too dark. We can add some more darkness later. And then once you've done those two parts, we want to connect them by blending. So I'm taking the side of my finger and I'm blending down towards the flower into the white and down or and blending back up towards the flower into the white. So you can see it's darker on the tip, darker towards the flower and light in the middle. And that creates three dimensional the three-dimensional look. And if you want, you can go darker again on each point. What I tend to do is I outline as we go. So then I know that I'm happy with the results of that. Now, if you want to go darker still, you can add a little bit of darkness and blend it with your fingers again. Okay, blend, blend. And as long as it's light in the center, it doesn't have to be pure white, just light. I'm having a hard time outlining there. <laughs> My pencil just wants to do its own thing. Okay, and while I'm down here, I'll just shade in the background petals, the ones on the other side. We see their back, so we see that they're very dark. Okay, so it's all dark under there, so I go as dark as I can. I don't want to rip my paper, but certainly nice and dark. Okay, so there's one petal and then the petal in behind. You're going to do that with all of these petals. Darker at the flower, at the center, and darker at the tip. And you can go over these layers a few times until you're happy. Okay. I'm going to now blend. So I'm using the side of my ring finger because it has, like it's a thinner spot and I can control it a little more than my pinky. And then for this guy, I'm using my index finger because I can really use a little bit of force to push that up. And then I outline, and when I outline, I do press down a little harder. And then there's a little line in here. I do press it a little harder so you can see it. And color in this guy. And there's my second petal. Okay, very happy with that one. So you're creating that three-dimensional look. And we're just going to keep going. Notice how I'm covering up that old circle line. I'm not worried about it because I know I'm shading it. Okay, dark at the point, dark at the center. And then... Blend down, I'm just going back and forth and blend up, back and forth. And I'm switching my fingers around once in a while. Remember you're distributing the oils that are in your hands. Up and then there's that center line as well that you can bring down. Okay, there we go. While we're here, we can color in our stem. I'll bring it up a little more so you can see the stem. Okay, I'm going to color it in the same color that I'm doing the back petals all the way down. Right down out the bottom of your page, which you can't see in my screen. Make sure you outline so it's nice and straight. Okay. And I'm going back to my flower now. So I'm going to bring it back down. There we go. So dark down here at the base of the flower, the center of the flower. And dark at the point. 
And I'm going to blend, blend, blend each way. Outline. This one I can outline the whole entire thing because it is the center flower. Okay, I'm gonna go and add a little more of those little squiggly lines. And then of course that center line of my petal. Four more petals to go, three more petals to go. Almost done. Okay, back and forth. Dark towards the center. Dark at the point. Blend those two together. Switching fingers so you distribute that oil. If it's not dark enough, you can always go back and darken it up. I might go back and darken the points a little bit more. Okay, it's completely up to you how you feel. Okay, once I've blended those and I'm happy, then I outline into the center, and then don't forget that center line of the petal. This guy has a petal in behind, so I color him in as dark as I can to show that he is in the background. Okay, and now two more. Dark at the center, dark at the point, and blend that up. Blend the, this part down. I'm gonna use my pinky. We're getting in a small area. Outline. Don't forget your little center line. And then I've got a little petal hiding in behind. I'm gonna color him in. And then one last one. I'm gonna darken, I almost started outlining, <laughs> darken the closest to the petal, or to the center. Darken the point. Blend the two together. And outline. Darken it up if you need to a little more. Now this didn't have a little center line, but because it's, it's, we're only seeing the first half. So this line here actually is the center line for both, okay? So it doesn't have a little center line, but it does have a little petal peeking from the background. Color that in, et voila, you're finished your flower. So I like to sign mine right against the petal here. You always sign your art, okay? And there is your bee coming to feast on the pollen of your flower. So if you wanna draw more of these flowers, you can now that you know how to do one, you could do a whole field of them. Um, that's basically it. So thank you so much for joining us. Hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna upload some more throughout the week and uh, that's about it. Have a great day, everyone. Bye now.